All right, so <laughs> UFC 280 just uh, got concluded, and uh, let's just ramble a little bit, all right? Have a few thoughts in the head, nothing nothing too crazy, but let's just talk about the fight card. Uh, first of all, I missed the whole entire prelim, which, you know, a lot of you were saying that I really didn't miss much, but I'll be honest, man, anytime there's a fight card, I really don't like missing anything. I like watching every single fight card, but one, I forgot that the fights were happening earlier because they, you know, they fought in Abu Dhabi. And uh, two, I just overslept, man. So apparently Bilal Muhammad got a TKO, which is like, I mean, are you guys going to finally put some respect on the man's name now? <laughs> because, I mean, everyone's been calling him boring. You know, he's become sort of a meme where everyone just, just describes him as someone that's not entertaining to watch. But for him to go out there and put on a performance like that, you know, that's got to at least gain a little bit of respect. But then again, knowing the mixed martial arts community, not really. You know, when you when 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 something becomes a meme, oh my gosh, as you guys can see right there, I guess sit down and uh not doing live commentary. This is this is matches that I recorded with uh for Islam Makhachev. I'm just gonna let it let it run in the background. And use it as a background just so you're not staring at my face as I'm doing a recap of the event. But, um, so good on Bilal, honestly. Very good for him. Hopefully, he gains a little bit of respect from this, but I'm not holding my breath. Um, and then, of course, moving on to the main card. Uh, first fight on the main card was Caitlin Chukagan. I'm not even going to try to pretend like I gave a crap about that fight. I truly, truly did not care about the fight one bit. Um, so it, it just wasn't memorable. Um, she won the fight, but, you know, the fight could have just not happened and I really wouldn't have cared um and then you had Benil Dariush versus uh, versus Mateos Gam Gam Gamrots Gamroots I'm sorry I've, I'm never able to say that man's name correctly Benil getting the decision win powerful win I'm like watching what happened right here I'm fighting Alexander Volkanovsky in this clip right here and of course we'll get to that and then, um, then it was the, the bantamweight fight between Sugar Sean O'Malley and Piotr Jan. Now, this match going in, of course, I talked about how, in a lot of ways, the pressure is actually on Sean O'Malley because he's the one with all the hype coming in. And you would think the pressure would be on the fighter that's ranked number one as opposed to the fighter that's ranked number 12. Because I believe he was ranked number 12 coming in, Sean O'Malley. But pressure seemed to be on Sean O'Malley. He's the one with the hype train. And it was going to be a question of how good is Sean O'Malley? Is he good enough to compete with Piotr Jan? And the answer was a big, fat, resounding yes. Yes. He damaged Sean O'Malley more than I have seen anybody else damage. I mean, he damaged uh, Jan more than I have seen anyone else damage Jan. The man is completely elite. Sean O'Malley is elite. And besides that, like it's one thing to fight pretty. It's one thing to have a very aesthetically pleasing style of fighting. Um, but in the in mixed martial arts, especially as you start climbing the rankings and you start dealing with the elite of the elite, a lot of times fights comes down to heart, man. You know, you could get injured, you could you could get hurt in the first round. Um, the fight could just start off terribly for you, and if you don't have the ability to stay the course and come back and and, and keep you cool and stay composed and calculated, even when the fight is difficult. Um, that's when you start to see beautiful fighters just crash and burn. But Sean, I think, proved to everyone, but most importantly, proved to himself that he definitely has the heart to compete with the best in that weight class. Especially when you look at who the champion is right now, Aljamain Sterling. Um, if Sean ends up fighting Aljo, he's going to deal with some serious adversity with the way Aljo fights. And he's going to have to, you'll need to have the heart to, to deal with that, you know, over long periods of time. He won the fight. There's some controversy. Um, I personally think maybe it should have gone to Jan, but it was also such a very close fight. It's it's it. I wouldn't say it's a robbery. You know what I mean? So good, really, really good fight. Very impressed with Sean O'Malley. Uh, of course, Jan also did did very good work in that fight, but uh, I guess he just did not do enough to get the nod from the judges. Then we move on to the bantamweight fight, the co-main event, which of course is a title fight. Between Aljamain Sterling and TJ Dillashaw as I knock out Alexander Volkanovsky right there. Um, that this one was very disappointing, bro. I'll be honest with you guys. Um, none of us knew that TJ was going into the fight injured. Um, but 
seconds into the first round. Um, he got taken down by Aljo, fell, and was wincing very, very hard. And you can tell he was he was messing with his left arm, but we didn't really know what the hell was going on. Um, at first, we thought it was maybe something with the wrist. Maybe he dislocated his, uh, maybe he broke his wrist. Maybe he dislocated a thumb or something. But then it, it came out that um, it was actually his shoulder. Like his shoulder had been popping over and over again before this fight happened. And he was coming into the fight already injured. And so it's just it's one of those things that, man, you're like, dude, that is such, it's such a pity, man. Such a shame because you really, really wanted to see, like, how, how would the fight genuinely play out if two guys are fighting at their best and one of them showed up? One of them showed up. Aljo showed up at his absolute best. TJ Dillashaw, on the other hand, did not. He was injured the whole time. And, of course, that now puts, like, an asterisk. Like, it, 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 there's, a, there's a small what if in the, in the fight, man. In a, in a title fight that was supposed to be a chance for both guys to showcase their skill. And I, I don't know, man. For me, I don't know why TJ showed up. Apparently, this injury occurred sometime in April. Like, he had more than enough time to say, bro, I'm not doing this. Give me time to recover. Um, I don't know whether it's arrogance. I don't know what it is for him to think he can show up in there against someone like Aljamain Sterling and, and defeat him while having an injury like that in a mixed martial arts fight. Like, bro, I know what it's like to have bad shoulders. Like, I have terrible shoulders. Um, I, just, I would never attempt to go into a fight like that. So, it happened. And uh, Aljo defeated him, stopped him. Stopped him by TKO, took his back, and just stopped him. Um, hopefully, they run it back as TJ is better. Um, and I wish him a speedy recovery, man, to be honest. And then we move on to the last last fight, which was, of course, Charles Oliver versus Islam. Makhachev, how long do I have in this video? Okay, quite a bit. Um, Charles Oliver versus Islam Makhachev. I mean, <laughs> it's like... Every single conversation we've had about this fight going in, I've said I'm leaning more towards Charles Oliveira. Not not Charles, um, towards Islam, just because of the style. You know, there's been a lot said about the fact that everyone's afraid of following Charles to the ground after they hurt him. You know, he's very easy to hurt, he's very easy to drop, but then his opponents are afraid to follow him to the ground. And so he gets to lay on his back, recover a little bit, stand back up, and get him out of there. But what happens when he runs into someone who has a very dominant top game, someone who will not be afraid to follow him down, someone who knows how to keep himself safe on the ground? What happens in that situation? And the, the question got answered today because he was dropped. He was sat down by Islam, and Islam followed him to the ground and, and, and showcased beautiful half-guard passing. It's like I've become such a fanboy of the half guard system especially whether it's top or bottom i'm such a fan of half guard in general and when i see fighters in mma demonstrate beautiful half guard work it's it's gorgeous bro like the the positioning the, the beautiful cross facing from there he of course set up the uh the karagatami which is arm triangle use that to secure the position um shoelaces tripod up passed into mount Charles Oliveira to prevent that try to roll to his back. Islam followed the momentum, stepped into side control, and immediately finished him. I mean, Charles was tapping very, very quickly. He got him out of there. Just choked him and finished him with the beautiful, beautiful arm triangle. And then afterwards, you know, they started talking about how um, Islam is going to be fighting Alexander Volkanovsky next, which I, I don't know, man. Like, it just seemed weird to me. It's like, personally, I think... There are some other fighters in the lightweight division that maybe are waiting their turn to get a chance at a champion. Um, I don't think, I think, well, whatever, whatever. The, the UFC will do whatever they want to do. Um, let me know in the comments if you guys think Charles deserves an immediate rematch. Let me know. But then again, um, I would say no, just because on paper, he wasn't actually champion coming in because of the, uh, because of the last last fight where he missed weight so they were essentially fighting for a vacant title if i remember correctly so i get it i get it this this wasn't necessarily a title defense for charles Oliveira, um but i think i think we we were all looking at charles as a champion walking into the octagon today 
But yeah, that's what happened. We now have a brand new lightweight champion. Brand new lightweight champion. And I think I think Islam is going to hold this belt for a very long time. I, I really don't see anybody taking the belt away from him. I think if he does fight Alexander Volkanovsky, it's going to be an interesting fight. But I think he also beats uh, Volkanovsky. I think Islam has the benefit of having very good striking, but also equally good grappling. Um, it's like there's a lot of comparisons to Habib, but clearly Islam has m more seasoned striking than Habib. And Habib's striking wasn't terrible, you know, it really wasn't. Um, but Islam definitely, he's more comfortable on the feet, for sure. So, there you have it. I don't know what you guys thought about the fight card. I asked you on, on Twitter and some of you were saying that you thought it was a bit lackluster. Um, it wasn't the greatest in the whole entire world for me either. Kind of... Especially because I missed the prelims. Um, but overall, you know, some of the fights delivered. Definitely Sean O'Malley versus Piotr Jan. It, deli it, it really delivered. I was hoping TJ versus Aljo was going to be more competitive, but that's just what happens when somebody gets injured. But that is where we are going to end it. I believe this fight is coming to an end. I don't remember how I got this man out of here. But... Uh, it should be very clear that I'm using Islam Mahachev right there. And maybe this will count as an Islam showcase as well because I didn't get to upload a showcase for Islam. And I think I'm going to do one for Charles as well because there are a few things I, I would like to talk about um, in regards to Charles as he gets dropped right there. Sit him down again. Oh, this dude quit out. I remember this man. He quit out right here. Yeah. So that's it. That is it. Thank you so much for watching this recap. If you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like. And uh, let me know your thoughts on the fight card. And I will see you later.